Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Hey Bala, I have a question. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Hope everybody is having a wonderful day. And before I get into this, let's intro what the show is about for you guys who are new to it. So it's been doing very well on YouTube, so I thank everybody for that. Um, this is where you guys get to uh, submit any of your old generic questions that I normally don't have uh, the, the specifics or the context to answer without spending years on it. And I get to spend years on the question. So we usually pick five questions of submissions. And those are, you're, you're able to make your submissions down below, or if you're watching live, exclamation point, hey, Bala in the chat, and you'll be pulled to a Google form where you'll record a question and tell me your name and stuff like that and just submit it. And then I pick, I go through all the questions. Uh, I got a lot between this time and the last, uh, the last time because it has been a long time, so I apologize for that. Uh, I already talked about that in the VOD review, so if you want that update, go over there. But besides that, I think we're ready to dive into some questions. Um, anything else? No, I think we're good. Oh, like and subscribe. There you go. Cool. Use code BALATW. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Yoipi. Oh, what? What the hell is that? Let's go. Yoipi with the perfect timing. Uh, all right. Let's get into some questions. First one here by Chimp. Yo, Bala, what's going on? Um, so I just have a question about um, solo mid game fights. So, what shite, what, what, sorry, <laughs> what fights should I be taking and what fights should I not be taking mid game? Um, if you could explain it to me on when you should push, when you shouldn't push. Um, cause I know in this current meta, kills are, are, are a big factor in order to get, um, place high. So, what fights should I be taking and how to take the fights? So, let's say I get into a fight and he gets high ground and I box up. Um, what should I do to make it? Cause box hits are always 50 50, right? So what should I do to not make it a 50-50? And how can I better myself to win fights um, mid-game? I don't I, Like, if, if there's a guy down in a box, I would probably just go down and try and take his walls and make a play on him. But what could I do better to make it so it's not a 50-50, but also get the kill? All right. Uh, sorry about the, the loudness. That was actually my fault, not his. Uh, I turned it down in the middle. I got to do some live mixing here because I have no idea how it's actually going to turn out on stream. So thank you in the chat for letting me know. Here's the question. Basically said, in solos, what fights should I be taking and what fights should I not be taking? And how should I take these fights? So we can break this down in a couple places. First off, I do want to say thank you to the Zypha family for the raid. Appreciate you guys two times in a row. Much love. So, Solos, what fights should I be taking? What fights should I not be taking? Let's start with that, right? Um, I put out a video a long time ago about playing for kill incentive, playing for uh, not only end game to get kill incentive, but also what fights you should push in terms of material imbalance, weapon imbalance, loot imbalance, uh, positional imbalance, all that sort of stuff. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit again, I think. Um, but the main concepts from it were in order to do well in format, which is with kill incentive, with points for kills, whether it's the old format where it's threshold based or this format where it's one point per kill, um, the main thing is you need to set yourself up for success, right? End game is the spot where you're gonna get the most kills. That is 100% a fact that is uh, undisputed, right? End game is where you get the most kills. There are some players who are really good early game fighters and, and early mid game fighters, but you're almost never gonna see a player who's good at fighting in, in tournaments in mid game and end game. Not, not so, well, somebody are, some people are good at it, but they're not going to be going and looking for these fights, right? Nobody's doing that because that is psycho. You're out of your mind if you're doing that because you're just gonna get third party. So think about that, okay? But setting yourself up for end game, for getting those kills, right? Uh, is about position, it's about your loot, it's about your materials, okay? You're, you don't want to be pushing fights in endgame with a, with a green pump or a white tack or something like that with no mobility so you can't even survive anything or with low materials, all right? Uh, I think that would be... Uh, I, anybody who gets a pop-off game has a good loadout or has good materials or had a good setup towards the end game. There's, there's very rare situations where a player goes and shambles into the end game and they end up with, you know, 15 kills or something like that. That almost never happens. So think about that. Think about how you need to set yourself up. Think about your early game, where you need to drop, where you want to drop, where you can find the most loot, 
where you can push people to find the most loot. We've talked about that a little bit in the past as well. And that's something that, again, is in that video that I did all the way back where Zexro would loot Viking and then quickly push soccer because soccer took longer to loot and Viking would have more materials by the time he got down to soccer. Um, so then he'd take that guy's loot, whatever it is, remember, just because you land at a spot that has worse loot than you does not mean that they're not going to have better or they might not have something that will be an upgrade for you, right? You could push somebody and get a rift to go. Well, not anymore, but you could have pushed somebody and get a rift to go, even though they only had a white tack and some shitty weapons, right? A semi-auto sniper. That. But that's still a valuable push for you, not only for the points, but for the loot, even if it's a, like a rift to go, you know? So that's playing for kill incentive. That is the general mindset you should have going through, right? But we also need to talk about uh, your second part of your question, which is how you should take these fights. Did I, did I cover everything on, on playing for kill incentive, actually getting all those points and, and doing what you want to do, basically? I, I think so, but I, I do want to come back and say and talk about the fights you shouldn't be taking and, and go a little bit more in depth on that, but how you should take these fights. You said box fighting was a 50-50 always, uh, which is not true. Um, a couple of people have actually submitted questions and said box fighting is a 50-50. I, 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 that is not true at all. Uh, if box fighting was a 50-50, then Booga would not have won the World Cup, right? But that, that is a very, very strange sentiment that I have never... Uh, I don't understand why there's a lot of people who are saying that. Box fighting is not a 50-50. If you're pushing somebody against their wall, that's not a 50-50 fight. There, the people are doing that on purpose uh, to... I mean, they're, they're pushing their advantage. They're doing what is good for them. And box fighting is actually the most efficient way to fight, right? The, one of the questions later on is about how to fight with like not not spending all, the, all so many mats basically or not having to fight with a lot of mats and box fighting is the most efficient and safe way to fight actually right if you think about it box, like when we when we all the way back when we watched the book of vod review when we did that when he qualified for world cup uh every single fight he would take would be with like 70 people alive in, in mid game or whatever. And he got pushed by somebody for, for whatever reason. And he would box fight them because it's so much less possible for you to just die from a third party and still deal with the player in front of you than anything else, right? I'd say any, anything other than box fighting is a 50 50. In, in tournament games, in tournament games, we're not talking arena, right? Arena, sure, build fight all you want. I don't care. Uh, but. Box fighting is the least 50-50 thing you could do. Uh, depending on your ping, of course. We have, we have to think of ping as well. But even then, box fighting is the right way to play the game. Because if you're, if you're fighting somebody in mid-game, you are, you are throwing. Just basically. I mean, a lot of people said in chat earlier, king, 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 king from World Cup. Sure, there's examples, but even king was a box fighter. He wasn't a build fighter. King was a box fighter. He would get his kills fast, easy, quick, in a box, and then get out. Right. So uh, how do you practice that and how do you get good at that? I think you just need to watch a lot of Booga clicks, a lot of King, a lot of these aggressive players who do that and try to implement your style into theirs, even though you might not have the same ping. Right. You could still do the things that they do. You can still do those things well. So that that's important. And then obviously you need to find the situations where you're going to put yourself in an advantage. Right. Uh, we, we're starting to drive back towards the which fight should I take? But like, if it, you you should be able to find fights where you get the sh the cup the first couple of shots first, and you dink them down to no shields, right? You should be able to crack their shield and then push, right? Those fights should come to you. You should be able to find those by having good position, making sure you're finding high ground, making sure you're sticking around the rotational item or the rotational spots, which are few and far between now in this patch season 10 but yeah move move around use your use your movement and your uh foresight of where people are going to path through to to find those opportunities all right and then third party opportunities too all right if you see somebody fighting go for shots look how the fight is proceeding is it a position that you want to fight in right is not the zone is not coming you're not storm fighting uh you can knock a build fight down or something like that look for those opportunities because those are those are fights that you can push and and win pretty easily if you can get some tags in and the tags are easier when people are third party or third partying so yeah 
All right, let, let's go back to which fights you should take because there's positional aspect. We talked about the loot and stuff like that and why you should push fights, right? You should push fights for loot, but why shouldn't you push fights? Um, position, the zone is coming. Position, you're not near any mobility. So if you fight for too long, the zone could be coming, right? You got to think about that. You can't, you can't see, oh, there's two minutes left until the zone starts moving. There's two minutes left. I can definitely take this fight without thinking about, oh, what if this fight takes two minutes, right? Can I, can I slipstream out of there? Do I have a launch pad to use? Do I have, sh sh have shadow bombs? <laughs> All right, Pete, do I have shockwaves? Do I have, do, I have, do I have anything that will save me? Do I have med kits to stay in the zone? Do I, all this stuff, right? You gotta take that in consideration when you are considering going for a fight, okay? Um, we didn't say, we didn't talk about pushing fights for position, right? If you want to, if, if for example, two of you guys are, are going for high, for, for, a, for a high ground spot in third zone, in the, middle of, uh, in the middle of third zone, there's a high ground spot in the center of zone, and you see this guy trying to push for it, and you're like, hell no, nah, I want that spot. Um, that, that's a reason you might fight, but then on the flip side, it's also a reason why you might not fight. If somebody has a better position than you, you do not want to fight them. You do not want to engage them at all, all right? There's no point in trying to fight somebody who has a better position than you already, right? Pre-established, they see you, for example, like that's not the way to go because what's going to happen is you're going to have to fight. Your, your fight is going to be expensive, essentially. Your fight is going to be you have, to, you have to think of your ability to fight and your, your potential to fight as a currency, right? Your mats are a currency, your health is a currency, your heals are a currency. If you fight, you're gonna spend these. So think about what you need to win the game, what you need to get all those kills that you want and win the game, because that's also clearly very, very, very important. Any fight that puts you uphill where you need to spend tons of mats, you need to probably spend some heals, because the fight's going to be extended. That's not a fight you want, right? You want to make sure that your currency that you have at the end of the fight is enough to continue throughout the game. Okay, so... <coughs> excuse me. Hope that helped. Chimp, appreciate the question. Let's move on into the next question, and I will check the mic levels and stuff like that. Hey, earlier. Bro, I have a question. How do you find an actual duo or trio mate? I've always had a duo. But it, it, also, it, it has always been chosen by my clan or team leader, and I never found someone that plays as much as me and takes it as serious as I do. All right. Thank you for the question, Cold. Um, and this question is pretty interesting to me. <laughs> uh, I, I get this question a lot, right? How do you find an actual duo or trio mate uh, or a teammate, right? How do you find an actual duo or trio teammate? People ask this all the time. I don't know why it's so difficult for people to find teammates, um, but actually, no, it makes a lot of sense. The avenues to get them and to find teammates are a lot more difficult now, especially in this game where there's really no tools to find teammates besides, you know, social media um, and Twitch. I, I feel like at the same time, there's no tools that are directly serving you to find teammates, uh, but... The tools that are there are better to find teammates, right? Back, back in my day, when I, when I played Counter-Strike, we used to go on IRC, which is a, a chat program, and go to a, a channel called Find Teammate or whatever it was back then, and type looking for teammate, and you'd basically put your advertisement in, in there, which is what everybody does in Discord, but I don't, I don't find those um, super useful because you're basically asking a random pool of people you're you're not asking somebody that you you are interested in, right? You're you're basically like, do I? I here's my requirements. Everybody, feel free to put in applications. It's like a a, a job uh, application type of thing. Like you you're putting it out there, but you never know what you're gonna get back. Um, so there, it's it is hard. I I think it is hard. I think this is a valid question. Um, but one thing I find really weird is the, the second part of this question, or at least the, the second part of your statement, was your duo has always been chosen by your clan or team leader, um, which doesn't make sense to me. I, I think that is a weird situation to, to start with, um, unless it's in a contract or something like that. You should never be forced to play with somebody. You should never be forced to play with somebody. If you don't, 
if they pick somebody and, and they are not as serious as you do, you should be able to say, no, I, I don't want to play with this person. Like, don't, don't ever put yourself in a situation unless contracted by a tier one org or something like that to play with somebody who's, or you signed with an org and then you're contracted to play with them. Um, that's the only time I think that is ever acceptable. Um, okay, but let, let's go back to, to how to actually find a teammate. How to find a teammate. Uh, okay, so we have tools. We have Twitter. We have Twitch. We have Instagram. We have YouTube. We have Discord. Okay? We have all this stuff. All of these platforms, you can watch people play. You can see clips. Right? You can post clips of yourself. Okay? You can clearly see when you are looking somebody up, you can clearly see how much time they put into it. Are they good? What is their communication like, right? So it's never, ever anymore a question of, hey, I need a teammate, somebody DM me, and then you get DM, or yeah, whatever, you DM, you two people meet up from DMs, and then they're like, okay, let's play, let's try each other out. Like, that that's used to be how you had to do it because there was no, there was no VODs, there was no clips, there was nothing like that. Um, you just, you, you have that now. So... When you, when you find a new teammate, when you're finding somebody to try out, look them up. Look up their Twitch, look up their Instagram, look up their Twitter, see if they're posting clips, see if they think they're good, see if they have the confidence, see how much they're playing. All these questions that you have and that you want to be on the same page with your teammate of, valiantly, I think that's a very, very smart decision to try to find a teammate that is, has the same goals as you, is as serious as you, and does play as much as you. I think that's very important. But go ahead and do the research. If you can't, if, if your, your ads don't work and you're not finding people to play with that have those and are not posting on Twitter and are not doing all this stuff, then don't look there. That ad place is not working, okay? Go straight to Twitter. Find the people that, like DM the people that you, you see are looking for teammates on Twitter and are posting clips that you're like, yeah, I want to play with this person, right? Um, that, that's important. The other thing is you have to also put it on yourself to be doing all those things too, right? You have to be, you have to be putting clips out there. You have to be putting uh, the fact that you are looking for a teammate out there. You need to be putting, you know, uh, content out there for people to see so that your name grows and so that people who see an ad from you will, will be like, oh shit, I, I've heard that guy. I've seen his clips on Twitter, right? It, it's not going to, it's... You're not going to explode by doing that, but it is important at networking aspect and looking for a team aspect that you prove yourself as well. And it makes that job so much easier. It makes it not only are you looking for people, but people are looking and seeing you as a possibility, right? And plus, you just have proof that you're good. I think that's, that's very important. Um, but then in your, in your ads, in your tweets, in, in anything, make sure you're pushing the... the, uh, the your goals, right? What, what are your goals? How often do you want to play a week? Where do you want to get to, right? What, what placement do you want to get to in the next Trios Cash Cup? Or what do you want to be a year from now? That sort of stuff. Have those conversations with the people that you, you talk to and, and make sure that you, you, you not only are putting them out there in your ads, when people talk to you or when you talk to somebody, make sure you are talking about your goals. If you go into starting playing a game and you've never talked to the person about what you want to do with the game, then you're, you're doing it wrong. And I know that's not something that most people do, right? Most people say, okay, yeah, let's play. And then they play. But I think it, it's smart and it's, it's more efficient to say, oh, hey, you're looking for a teammate? I'm looking for a teammate too. What do you want to do with the game? What are your goals? How far do you want to take this? How often do you want to play? Answer those questions. And then hopefully, hopefully you get an answer either way, right? That you, okay, you might want to play with this guy. This guy is actually a serious contender or not, right? Not is good too. The fact that you know he doesn't have the same goals as you is way better than wasting your time doing anything else. Um, yeah, and somebody, somebody in chat said, uh, the clips, et cetera, don't just put creative clips. Yes, very important. <laughs> Make, make realistic like clips, make realistic videos, make, do stuff um, that is realistic and that gives, you, gives people a picture of who you are and what you do. 
Yeah. I think that makes sense. But definitely uh, fix that stuff with the clan. I don't know if it's forced or whatever, but uh, don't don't force yourself to play with people you don't want to play. That is a that, that's something that I I fall in into that category a lot too, right? I fall into that category a lot. I, I think last episode I even talked about when we were talking about building chemistry with your teammates. I, I talked about how I've played multiple teams, played with multiple teams. Sorry. And ended up spending way too much time and grinding with them and then figuring out the fact that we didn't have the same goals. We, we just were not aligned at all. Um, so and, and, and there's some there's some cases that I'm referencing where I, I, I specifically just stayed because I was too lazy to find another teammate. Or I didn't want to, to, to deal with the social pressure of breaking up with my team, you know, like screw that like just break like just just break it off if you do not want to play with them just break it off stop don't do it there's no point of you doing it all right do not do it at all just stop uh unless it's just a temporary thing you know it's a temporary thing whatever you just need need to play the duo scrims of that night or whatever that's fine just make make it clear right uh there was there was a point actually and i forgot to talk about the whole bumper thing right there was a point oh okay let's 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 back it up bump and i became teammates because i saw his content the educational content i asked him a couple questions and i saw that he was actually pretty good i was looking for a scrim partner i said okay let's let's scrim together and then we 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 right at the beginning we talked about our goals we said okay i want to get i want to get to prac court that was that was our goal that was our goal i want to get to prac court but i also was very 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 clear about the fact that once I got to Pratt Court, I wanted to focus on analytics, content creation, educational content creation, and, and casting, possibly. I told, I told Bump of that. I was like, I want to become really, really good so that I can catapult this into a career doing other things. And he was like, cool, that's fine. As long as you are going to grind to get to Pratt Court. We talked about it. We had to play every single uh, day that there was the league. We played the entire night, all five matches, some nights before that as well, or uh, some matches before that as well. And then we made Pratt Cord. And pretty quickly after, we, we played a little bit, but Bumpa was like, okay, I'm going to go find somebody else, right? Because I was not, I was no longer taking the game as serious. I was very clear about that. I was like, hey, man, I can't play as much. I can't play tonight. I can't play tonight all that sort of stuff. I was like, feel free to find a new duo, right? I was, I was very okay, upfront about that. So it was easy for him, but you have, to, you have to do that. If somebody's not playing enough, stop. Go play with somebody else. All right, cool. Let's move on. Hope that answers your question, Cold. I hope that helps. I hope you find a teammate that is on the same page as you. But thank you for the submission. All right, moving on. We had a question here from Convert. How can you develop a strong mentality with which you can accept unfortunate situations without tilting, learn from them, and then move forward? Uh, I'm going to play that again just because I don't think that that was loud enough. So let's do that. How can you develop a strong mentality with which you can accept unfortunate situations without tilting, learn from them, and then move forward? Awesome. Thank you for the question, man. Uh, so if that was too hard to hear, he basically said, how can you develop? Well, actually, it's, it's right there. How can you develop a strong mentality from which you can accept unfortunate situations without tilting, learn from them and move forward? Okay, cool. Very, sim very, very, very straightforward question. Um, but I think it's difficult to answer. I think this is a problem that a lot of people deal with, especially in this game, especially right now in season X. <laughs> I don't have to. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't have to say why, because this is probably one of the most frustrating uh, playing experiences, at least in Arena right now. Customs are actually, you know, okay, minus the ones that end on Tilted Town, but the mechs are not fun, man. They are, they are one of the most tilting things ever, right? They are so frustrating. Oh, my goodness. But we've had experiences all the way back um, to, to, to C4, to Deagle Spam, to Planes. Man, we... This is a game where you have to be strong. You have to be strong mentally uh, in order to stop tilting. Um, so how, how do you stop tilting? Number one, uh, how, do you, how do you stop tilting? 
that's that's a that's a tough one and it's gonna be different for everybody i think right it's not not every some people just just tilt it's fine whatever it's okay as long as you can jump back as long as you can bounce back from it uh i think is important some people don't tilt at all right if you if you tilt your tilt you're you're you are tilting all right some people tilt and they're like right back up uh so it's different for everybody i think tilt is necess is is always bad right it's always bad. It's always going to be bad, at least in, in the short term, if not the long term. Um, so how do you stop tilting? I think one of the, mo the more important things that helped me stop tilting was, and I still tilt to this day, especially with the freaking mech, um, was treat every situation as a learning opportunity. You can learn from every situation, no matter how frustrating it was. No matter how many times it has happened, right? You can land on a gray pistol a million times and, and, and not treat it as a learning opportunity and just blame the fact that you landed on a gray pistol as the reason you lost and the reason why you are getting mad right now and the reason you're pissed off. Um, I don't think that, you know, you, if you land on a gray pistol, the answer, the answer should be, I need to figure out how I don't land on a gray pistol, right? That, that, very frustrating. Like, again, very frustrating, a very common situation. And it, the answer sounds stupid, right? The, the way that I said that sounds stupid. Just don't fucking land on a gray pistol. Like, duh, you stupid idiots. No, 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 no. Like, it, it's not like that. It, it is, really. Let's evaluate this. Let's take a step back and evaluate it, right? Why did I land on a gray pistol? Because... I picked a spot that there was only one one floor loot, so I couldn't find anything else, right? Nothing nothing else spot. It could be because somebody took my spot that I wanted because my landing was shit. Okay? Cool. It could be that I didn't realize that I was getting 50/50 at the last second even though my landing was good. This guy also had a good landing, so I had to back up to an option that sucked. Or it could just be I I drop at somewhere shitty, right? Number five, we're, we're down to five reasons right now. Number five, or it, honestly, it's probably not number five, but let's just say finally you come to the, to the, the, none of these reasons were why, and finally you come to this game's RNG sucks and I got screwed because Epic doesn't want to fix the loop pool, right? No, come on. Like there are so many, so many reasons why it could have been, you could have fixed this before that. Right. Don't settle on epic, 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 epic. This game is trash. Don't settle on that. Never. If so, call yourself out when you do that. Right. Get get to the point where every time you die to something stupid. Ask yourself why you died to that stupid thing. Right. Why you died to the mech. God, this feels. Oh, but but seriously, ask, ask yourself that. Is there anything I could have done better? Where that would not have happened. Yeah? Probably. Probably. All right? Probably. That's always the answer. So, in order to stop tilting, treat every situation as an edu educational opportunity and call yourself out when you don't do that. When you say, this game's RNG is trash. I hate this game. He 50 50 me. This guy's a bot. Don't call yourself out. Make sure you know specifically when you do that to stop doing that because it's wrong. You're wrong. You're, you're, you're being stupid. Not that guy. Not epic. And while there are certain circumstances that are not ideal for a competitive game, it doesn't matter. You are still playing the game. Right? It doesn't matter. I, I, you can have something be completely RNG. It doesn't matter. You're playing the game. You're choosing to play it. So you have to just... Play the game that you have and not the game that you hoped it was. That being the most important factor. Okay. All right. Cool. We're done with that. We're done with uh, tilting for reasons that are out of like reasons that are out of your control when really they are in your control. Let's let's get that out of here. Okay. Tilting. Still, you could tilt at yourself. You could you could tilt on yourself, right? You could you could say. Fuck, I suck at this game. I am trash. I have this all the time. This is, this is my main form of tilt, right? I, I see a bot 
I'm like, all right, I'm going to stomp a bot. Let's go. I'm Booga. I'm going to box fight your bitch ass. And then you you roll up on this dude and 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 you 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 get you get a wall around you get a box around him you you absolutely doo doo on him and then you miss your shot and he hits you with a one pump by accident because he flicked his mouse by by accident or he has a he has a controller or or, or something like that right and and what I do is I always blame myself I I can't believe I lost to this guy this guy's a total bot like what the hell. That's insane. How how do I lose to him? I can I can build. You can't build. What the hell? Right? That that's something that that is my biggest tilt fact. That is the biggest thing that tilts me all the time. And there's nothing you can do that be like, oh. Well, actually, I, I was gonna say there's nothing you can do from an educational perspective, but no, there is. Right? Teach yourself that everybody can beat you, no matter what. You can always play a situation poorly. And, and and that's the answer for me most of the time. When I have that reaction, my 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 fix is I could have played that better. I made a I made an edit that gave him right hand peek on me. I was left hand peeking into him. Even though he's a bot, he still gets the advantage in that situation, right? That that's something that I say to myself all the time. Okay. So still, every situation is a learning experience. All right. I think I've said that enough. Every situation is a learning experience. All right. Another another tilt factor is is well, another way to stop tilting rather is find out what tilts you. Find out what tilts you. You know what tilts me? Fucking shockwave grenades. Fuck shockwave grenades. I hate those things, man. God, they're so annoying. Every time I fight somebody in arena, they they just shockwave away or they shockwave height a million times. They have six shockwaves and they just spam that shit. Fuck shockwave grenades. God damn. Every time somebody throws a damn shockwave grenade, I tilt off the planet. I'm tilting just thinking about it. I am tilting just thinking about somebody shockwaving away from me or shockwaving on the height. Oh my goodness. But I have recognized that shockwaves tilt me. They tilt, they tilt the shit out of me, okay? So I am making a conscious effort that when I see somebody shockwave, I don't, I, I'm like, I, I, I hold myself back, right? From, from getting mad, uh, from doing a stupid play because somebody's shockwaving, from trying to 50-50 the dude in the air because I'm an idiot and I'm mad, right? I do that all the time. How many times have I died because a guy sh- shockwaves up with a combat and I'm like, Fuck you. I'm going to use my tack on you. No, I, I, I do that so much, but I have started consciously saying if somebody shockwaves, I'm holding myself back. I will, I will box myself up. That's it. That's my, that's my, if somebody shockwaves up, I'm just going to box myself up. Okay. If somebody shockwaves away from me. All right. That's fine, man. That's just, that's just a thing that's in the game. I can't do anything about it. I can maybe try to fight around mobility or use my mobility to catch them, but if they get away, they get away, okay? That, that's just, I have to have that mentality because I get tilted against shockwaves. So, yeah, find the things that tilt you. When you get killed by a mech, figure out something that you could do to hold yourself back, right? Or figure out how to beat mech. How, anybody figure out how to beat mechs yet? <sighs> Anyways, uh, anything else on this? I don't, I don't think so, um, but I, I think I will leave on the topic of whenever you die, whenever you are in an educational situation that you can learn from, don't. So we, we do all the things that we talked about about tilting, but always have an actionable solution from that situation. You don't have to VOD review every single little thing, every single detail, every reason why you die. But when you die, figure out why you died, and what you can do not to die again that way, okay? Do something. Make sure it's something. For me, if somebody shockwaves on height, I will box up. I will box up so that they can't shoot me with their combat, and then I will continue to fight. That's it. That's my action, and I have stopped tilting because of shockwaves. Well, we'll see. I haven't really implemented it. But anyways, thank you for the question, Convert. I really liked it. appreciate it. I uh, hope it helped. Let's move on to this one. Is, uh, this one's an intense question, so... Uh, Bear with me, it's long, but I think it'll be good. So, this is from Henry. Hey, Bala. I have a pretty loaded question. So, I'm just going to explain the situation I'm in, and then any advice you have would be much appreciated. 
Everything I'm about to say applies to me and my duo. We started grinding the game super hard when World Cup was announced. In most of uh, the weeks of the World Cup qualifiers, I placed okay but not good enough to make money. My only goal right now is to play competitive Fortnite at the highest level. I have spent my entire summer doing nothing but Kovacs Creator, Arena, and Custom, playing 8 to 12 hours a day. The problem is I feel like my mindset and mental health are holding me back. I put so much pressure on myself to succeed that when I don't, I get really down on myself. Every cash cup I place outside the money, and then the next few days I contemplate quitting because I think I will never be good enough, but of course I keep grinding and practicing. I feel like my mindset might be holding me back from having success in the game. I have the desire and the dedication, but I have no confidence, and I get so down on myself when I don't perform well that I question whether I'll ever be able to have success in competitive Fortnite. As of right now, I plan to try to make money in the cash cups, and if I still haven't made anything when school starts back up, I plan on quitting. One thing I do want to make clear, though, is I'm not playing Fortnite competitively just for the money. I love the game, and I love the everyday grind of constantly trying to improve. The reason I'm so focused on making money is it will get me the support of my parents, and they will actually believe in what I'm trying to do. I just wanted to know how you think I should handle this situation. All right. First off, Henry, thank you so much for the question. Thank you for uh, opening up and being so honest, right? This is... The, 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 you don't know how many times I get a question like, oh, I'm really, really good, but I can't win. Uh, how do I win? Like, that, uh, like, clearly, you know you need to improve. You know you are not where you want to be yet. And you're opening up to thousands of views on, on people you don't even know. That's, that's crazy to me, so respect, man. Uh, really solid question, too. And I think a lot of people are struggling with this exact question, right? So... For those of you, I, I was messing with the audio a little bit. I'm getting better at live mixing. Um, but he basically says, I'm placing okay, but he's not making money. And he feels like he's struggling with the grind, his mental health, feeling like he's not good enough, feeling like his parents aren't supporting or uh, feeling like he's disappointing his parents. Right? Even though he loves the game, even though he loves, he loves the grind, apparently. Right? So I, I think this is very relatable to a lot of people, um, a lot of people, some people I know personally very well. Uh, I, I feel like this, this even applies to, to some of the guys who are really close to World Cup qualifiers, or even the guys that went to World Cup qualifiers. I, I feel like a lot of people feel this way, where they're, they're, they're just barely not good enough. They, they really are close to it. They're trying so hard, but they're not succeeding yet, right? And let me, let me start off by saying, you can do it. You can do this. You can do this. Anybody can do this. You just have to work hard, work efficiently, and work better than everybody else. That's the most important part. There's so many other people who are exactly in the same situation as you, Henry. You are in the exact same situation as thousands of people, really, when you think about it. Thousands. So you have to do better than so many other people. Think about that. And, and trust me, the way you've already put this, where you place okay, you are doing way better than thousands of other people, if not tens of thousands, it's not hundreds of thousands of people, right? You were probably already in that top 5%. That's fucking amazing. Like, think about it. That's really good. It, it might not be where you want to be, but it is good. So just continue, fix what you need to fix. And this is a, this is a good step towards it, right? Um, and then I also respect the fact that you said, uh, if I don't place in the money by the time school starts, I will, I'll quit. Right. I respect that. You know why? Because I did the exact same thing, right? It was for a different reason, but I, I said, I, when I went full-time in January, my goal was certain goals after three months and six months. If I did not reach certain growth goals, I was going to go back full-time. I, I eclipsed those. Luckily, I was very, very fortunate to, to eclipse those. So we don't have to worry about those. I still have goals and I still have that in the back of my mind that if I'm not where I want to be, then I will end up stopping what I do, right? That, that, that is something that still goes on my mind. It is still an idea. It is distant in my, in my idea right now because I, I feel like I'm doing very well, but I respect that. You need to have those things, right? The commitment should not be all the time if you have specific aspirations on being a pro. But don't quit. You don't have to quit. If you love the game, just keep playing. If it's fun for you, if you like spending the time, then do it, right? 
Unless you have something else that you want to do as well. If, unless you have other goals that it's interfering with. But if you like playing competitively, just play. Well, you don't need to become the best player in the world. Just play competitively. Right? I, I played Counter-Strike forever without, without the goal that I wanted to be a pro. I just wanted to be really good. I wanted to be the best version of me that I could be. And sure, I was like, oh, if I'm good enough, then I'll, I'll do it. But I was, I was never like, I want to be a pro. I finally ended up quitting back in college after I was really, really, really good because I needed to go to college. I needed to go to college. That was it. Um, so don't, don't quit if you love it. Just play. You don't have to play all the time. You don't have to grind like you always are. Just play. Have a good time. Have fun. If it's something enjoyable in your life, keep doing it. Now, if it's something not enjoyable in your life, if you are mentally draining yourself to the point where you are thinking that you are not good enough and that you should quit because you are wasting time, then, you know, I start to end up in the, the page where I'm like, well, maybe if you're not having fun, if you are literally stressing yourself out to the point of being depressed, then, then, then you should probably think about stopping, right? If it is, if it is not fun for you. So this might, I don't think this is applicable to you, Henry, but I think it is applicable to other people. You know, if you're not having fun, stop playing guys. Really like you are, you are actually hurting yourself. You are hurting yourself. Take a break at least do something. We talked about the grind in another, in actually think episode one, if you want to go back and check that out um, and getting demotivated and stuff like that. But I think this goes deeper. I think this is literally on that, the point of quit quitting so but but evaluate evaluate it man evaluate it you have to you have to make a decision on is this not fun for me ever was it always fun is there moments that it was fun can i recapture those how do i do that if it was never fun then then i don't know what you're doing right just just please guys if if you're think about that and evaluate it that's all i ask um okay let's move on uh to to the topic of why you are playing and why you have this goal of making money and placing in the money to gain your parents' support. Um, so I, I, I don't know the context and I, we're not going to find out the context, obviously, in this question, but why? Why do you need your parents' support? I, I don't, are, are they limiting you? Are, are, they, are they pressuring you to stop playing? Are they... Are, are you asking for something from them, like dropping out of school, getting homeschool or something like that? Because in that case, um, I, I, I feel like those goals are not what you want to do, right? Just educate them on why you like the game. Tell them it's fun and they should support you. If not, then unfortunately, that's not something I can really help with and I'm not qualified to, to help with. But, you know, um, I, I don't necessarily think that that is, a, that, is, that is a thing that you need to get, right? You don't need to get their support to become a pro player. You become a pro player, and if they, are, if they approve of it, if you're making enough money to do it, then sure. Like, but you don't need to do that to become a pro player. Um, and then the other thing is, if they're pressuring you to do things, then you should probably do it. I don't know how old you are, Henry. I don't know any of that, but... Um, if, if they're pressuring you to, you know, make sure you're doing good in school, then do fucking good in school, right? Prioritize, prioritize. You got to get your priorities straight. Do good in school. Work if that's what they want or if that's what you need, right? If you need money, if that is actually the, the case, if you need money, then, then go work, right? Go work part time. You don't, you really don't need to be grinding eight hours a day to, to be good at this game. In anything, really, you don't need to be doing eight hours. You don't need to be. You don't need to be doing the most duration. You just need to be doing the most efficient in your small sections of time that you have, right, for your goals and for your time schedule. Okay, you really don't. You really don't. Oh, okay. They're in chat. Attention, ball. And me and my duo are pressured to not dedicate the time to play. We are both sixteen and got good grades. Okay. Well, you you are playing a lot. If you really think about it, you're playing a lot, all right? And it is worrisome for parents. It's absolutely worrisome for parents if, they're, if their kid is playing eight hours a day after going to school and after doing all their homework and stuff like that. Like, yeah, man, it's worrisome. It is worrisome. They don't see any results. I get it. I get it. 
So try to do something to make them happy. You don't, again, be efficient with your time. That, that's the most important thing. And if you guys love the game, play, play for the love. Just play for the love, improve, keep getting better. You don't, again, you don't necessarily need that. If you guys do, if you decide, hey, I need to get this, I need to place in the money, that's fine. You can do that. I really, I really believe you can. You just need to be more efficient with your time. You probably need to do something to help satisfy that other portion, right? And go forward. But don't don't quit. You guys love it. Don't quit. Don't quit. You can do it. You can do it. All right. Hope that helps, guys. Um, sorry if it wasn't what you wanted to hear. <laughs> sorry if it wasn't what you wanted to hear. But hope it helps. Thanks for the submission, Henry. And uh, hope you hope you reach your goals, man. Hope you place in the money coming up soon. Uh, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. All right, last question, guys. This is from Mechbots. Hey, Bella. Um, I have a question. So I feel like oftentimes, even though I'm a pretty good builder, and my aim is okay, I honestly feel like I don't know how to play the game <coughs> because when I have no mats or it's really early in the game, if I get into a fight. I almost always lose, so I'm kind of tired of just camping every game and hoping to farm up and then killing people because I cannot play them then. But I wish I knew how to actually meet people without the need to have a thousand mats and maybe like the best guns in the game. All right, thank you for the question, Mechbot. Much love. Uh, he basically said he feels like he's a pretty good. Builder and he has decent aim, but he feels like he doesn't actually know how to play the game. So another honest submission. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mechbot. Um, much better than your previous submission. <laughs> um, and I, I it, there was there's an element of not being able to fight somebody with without mats. So I, I feel like there is the there's a hidden aspect in this question where it's basically I don't know how to play the game. I don't know how to fight people. I just don't. I die every time I fight people, right? And then there's the there's the more uh, more less humble version of the question, which is I can't beat people unless I have a lot of mats after camping for a while. Um, so I, I think let's even if that's not what it is, Mechbot. If if the second part is more true than the first part, I think still people are interested in that first part, anyways. Um, I, I, there's been a lot of people who have given this advice, but it is very, 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 very true. Okay, if you are bad at fighting, you cannot fight somebody. Go fight people. <laughs> go, go fight people. Go, just push every single person you see. Play pubs. Just push every single person you see. Play arena. Push every single person you see. Build that confidence. Right. Build that confidence. Just fucking W key. And we we're all going to hate you for it. We're all going to be like this freaking idiot when you push us. But just do it. Right. I don't care how many times you die. If you die 100% of the time for the next week pushing people. Then you have learned a valuable lesson. And you will probably have gotten conditioned to the fact where it doesn't matter when you die anymore. You're going to be like, okay, whatever. I died. You're not gonna have that 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 um, nervousness when you fight somebody. That jitters, the the butterflies in your belly when you push somebody. You're not gonna have that anymore, right? Which is a lot of people. They 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 see somebody and they're like, "Shit, there's somebody in front of me. I can't fight this. I gotta run. I gotta run." And yeah, um, calling you out, Chibi. But nah, yeah, just push everybody. Get rid of those nerves. Get rid of that. Get, get used to fighting. Get used to fighting a lot. And then you'll be able to, to overcome that. And make sure that you are doing all the principles that I've, outlined, that I've talked about so many times, right? After every fight, figure out a reason why you lost and figure out a solution to that reason, right? Something that I have uh, been preaching to myself for a long time is don't look for the problem, look for the solution, okay? Look for the solution, and that's why I say always actionable solution, right? When you VOD review, when you, when, you, when you think about why you died, do not end on, do not finish your thought 
on I died because I missed my shot or I died because I made a bad edit, right? Don't ever end on that because what's going to happen is the next game you're going to queue up and you're going to go and you're going to make a bad edit again and you're going to die again because you haven't made any plan on how to not make a bad edit, right? What edit are you replacing it with? Think of the solution, not the problem, right? Make sure you end on the solution. That is your final thought, okay? All right, let's, uh, let's address the fact of uh, the, the, the second part or the second type of this question where it says, I wish I knew how to beat people without the need to have a thousand mats. Um, and this to me sounds like you don't know how to box fight. Uh, so what I would suggest is literally every fight, every single time you get pushed, every single time you push somebody, let them push you and box up, box up. And, and wait for them to come to you. Now you are not spending 1,000 mats. You're spending 70 mats to build your box and then fight them. Sure, you might have to spend extra mats, but you're not spending 1,000 mats. If you can win those fights, you're no longer spending 1,000 mats. And you can, yeah, that's, that's good. You're good. Now you will not have to camp. I mean, you're still camping, which is not what you want to do. But um, box fighting is the way right now. The box fighting is how you have to fight in real games and tournament games. I don't know what we're talking about here, pubs, arena, whatever, s customs. Um, but definitely box up. That, that's a solution there. You should not have to spend a thousand mats. Okay. Now on the other side, if you don't want to, you know, be working on your box fighting skills for today or whatever, and you're not using that solution, let's, let's make sure that we use Let's try to end fights quickly, right? Let's let's do something that will try to end fights quickly. Um, whether that is making sure that you're catching people in their box, making sure that you are shooting them down rather than building, and making sure that you are constantly shooting, I think is very, very, very important. Um, okay, and then another way to, to end fights is get the jump on people. Position yourself where you are going over a hill where you saw somebody going into a little crevice and shoot them before they shoot you. <laughs> yeah. as, as a wise young calc once said, shoot them in the head. Very smart. Do that from a distance. That's how you will win your fights and that's how you will end up being better. But shh, yeah. Again, when you, when you end up getting a jump on somebody, you get 100 damage on them and, and they start fighting you, you build fight them, then shoot them. Shoot, 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 shoot. Um, what else? What else? Oh, I, don't, I didn't hear this aspect at all. It sounds like you're probably pretty confident in your building, so I assume you create a 1v1 a lot. But do that a lot. Zone Wars a lot. Box fight a lot. Turtle fight a lot. Turtle Wars a lot. Do all that stuff. That is so crucial to your growth as a person who can fight. <laughs> so crucial. So very crucial. But anyways, appreciate the question, MechBot. And uh, that is going to be a wrap for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for all the questions. Chimp, Cold, Convert, Henry, and MechBot. You guys are awesome. These were really good questions. I hope you guys keep them coming. If you're watching live in Twitch chat, it's exclamation point. Hey, Bala, if you are watching on YouTube, it's down in the description. A link to the Google Forms where you can submit your Vocaroo uh, voice recording to me. And we can go through them. I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all the things on my social media, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram. And we'll be back with more content just like this. Episode 4 coming next week on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you guys there.